quick I'll update you about uh oh yeah the the no jumper stuff right I thought this was really funny so there's this clip that I found of AD calling into the Joe Budden podcast and basically laying out his issues that he had with Adam to the Joe Budden podcast people and I found this really funny because everything that AD says about Adam from No Jumper could be applied to Joe Budden of the Joe Budden network and of the Joe Budden podcast. Legit. Like word for word, line for line, bar for bar. Um, for those okay. listening, we live. We live. This is, this is AD, uh, who was formerly of No Jumper. Yes, sir. So we were just discussing what happened over there. And um, I said I wanted to give you a call so you could, you know, put your, get, give your side out there. And you can tell us yeah, what really yeah, went yeah. down. Yeah, I was listening. I was listening to Joe yesterday too. He was cooking. Ah, uh, thank you, man. I was on his ass. Yes. He was slow roasted, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you went out. Now, <clears throat> I mean, um, where should we start? It was a, it was a lot of. Um, I'm, matter of fact, I'm just gonna cut straight to the chase. Adam, Adam, you know he has a real big problem with accountability. You know. That could also be applied to Joe Biden. I'm saying I looked at him as a as a friend. So did Rory or Moore. They looked at Joe Biden as a friend. Outside of the business. I, that's exactly Moore's point. Moore's like, business is business. But at the end of the day, we're friends. I think Moore's actual bar was like, oh, um, if we're not friends, then why are we doing this? Like, can we actually be friends? That's actually his main thing. Like, you know, call them naive because Joe Biden has got a record, more documented, well investigated, researched and available evidence of him messing up his friendships again and again and again. Maybe he doesn't think they're friends, but his acquaintances, his whatever, or like he's he's a king of self-sabotage. So maybe they should have been aware that it could have happened to them and then maybe having this idea, oh, he wouldn't do it to me was maybe rooted in some sort of arrogance or some sort of um, weird friendship entitlement that kind of made them immune to whatever. But still, all this could be applied to Joseph Budden. I had his back and I feel like a lot of the reason why I was hired in the first place was, you know, he knew my street connections and he kind of leaned on that and it ended up turning into like a, a, a business relationship when he seen how... Some people could argue... Joe Budden exploited the fact that he was friends with Rory and Moore and the fact that they wouldn't be, you know, tearing up the, the flipping contract or reading it line by line to get as much as he killed out of it. So then he could keep all the money and allegedly buy all the crappy Balenciaga that he obviously wears or the Amiri hats. Allegedly. Some would argue that. And of course, we were saying in the chat, yeah, he did. He, he's he, Remember that famous line he told them all? The podcast is none of your business. That is mad. Imagine in the heat of an argument, somebody that you're working with, um, you know, you're co-hosting the show and you've made it out to be what it was. And let's not make no mistake. Joe Budden's bounced back impeccably. Well done to him. The ability to put together a crew of people who've been able to at most, you know, like consistently, sorry, produce an entertaining podcast, both like free on Patreon, the live streams they're doing, smashing it. He's definitely got an eye for talent and he can definitely put people together. And he's definitely a blockbuster kind of guy. But let's not lie. The first irritation, the first iteration of this podcast was successful because of the boys, like that com that kind of community, that vibe they had, the call-ins. But the host, the co-host, Rory and Moore played an integral part. So did Park. So did Ian. All these guys, they they contributed to making that show a success. But for whatever reason, in Joe's head, he was always the main star. So he never really thought that they were deserving of an explanation or this or whatever it may be. So he treated them like crap. But it is what it is. Time has moved on. But I just find it funny that AD saying all this stuff and it could be applied to Joe Budden bar for bar, line for line. How many people in his audience took to me? Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. And as time went by, um, as I was growing, he pushed me to start streaming. He pushed me to start doing different endeavors. And uh, once I... Once it started, you know, becoming successful, I felt like he kind of, you know, started looking at me a little different. And yeah, man, then, you know, the, just the, the power tripping started happening. And, you know, once you playing with the guy's livelihood and shit like that, like we sitting there looking at like, all right, look, we got to make sure that we. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's a clip 
One of the things is what I remember, ADS made a good point. One of the things that used to really irk me a little bit about Adam, at first it was a bit of a, like a, a laughing thing and something of, of a comedic kind of a value to kind of add on a podcast. But after time, it started to feel like he was being real. When Adam would be on a show or like a no jumper show or something and they'll be doing their little, they're doing their discussions or whatnot, there'd come a point where, I don't know, AD or Housefront or somebody will be talking about something, maybe a story that they've said a thousand times on a podcast or a joke or something, right? And for some reason, you should get really under Adam's skin, even though, for the most part, even myself included, I think someone always takes the piss out of me in my comments about my tendency to repeat the fucking chicken fingers story, the story about me fighting in the loafers. Like, it happens all the time. If you speak on camera often enough, you end up repeating the same stories because they're funny or because they, I don't know, they're an important part maybe of your history or something, whatever. You end up repeating stories. For some reason, Adam would get pissed off with it and you'd always say the line, this is bad podcasting. At the start, it felt like a joke. Then it started to turn into like a, he was kind of like thinly veiled scolding and reminding them of kind of who's boss, like a little microaggression. Hey, hey, calm down, boy. Calm down. Relax, boy. Relax, relax, relax. And it kind of got a bit annoying. And after a period of time, he took it a step further by basically suggesting that the show wasn't maybe doing what it should be doing openly on air. When really you should be kind of taking your coast to one side and saying, hey, you guys to step up a bit. Because even AD, I think, would admit towards the end of like his time at No Jumper, he was phoning it in a bit. I think he even said it himself on his podcast. He was phoning it in. He wasn't really trying. He wasn't coming in with hot takes. He wasn't trying to be entertaining because he was spending most of his energies on his own thing, right? The community stuff, which you can get. But if you're being employed by that guy, you should maybe kind of bring your A game and block not whatever it may be. But I always thought that little thing that he did was really annoying. That little kind of reminder of like, this is that, this is that. But final point I want to make on this. You know, you know what this made me realize? This whole drama with, with them, no jumper and everyone leaving. t Row leaving, Duno leaving, Smack leaving, Blasi leaving, House Phone leaving, Duno leaving. All these people leaving. What made me realize is this. I actually think this is one of the reasons why, even though girls, especially if you can look at like hip hop, um, sh- hip hop like tea room blogs, or vlogs like on Instagram. No, vlog blogs on Instagram and YouTube channels, right? T channels. Sometimes they get a little bit like it gives me a headache after a while because like God Almighty, man, girls can gossip every single day like about this nonsense stuff, making up these fan fictions about people. In actuality, one of the really key things that women get, apart from being maturing really early on than guys compared to guys, right? Girls mature really early, and we have to kind of go through this kind of ape phase, like Ooh, figuring out stuff really, really dumb. One thing that girls realize really early is that everybody's talking behind your back. Girls are not naive to like people gossiping about them. They're not naive about their friends stabbing in the back. They're not naive about, um, you know, politics in the workplace. Like it's very rarely have I met a girl in a workplace who doesn't know how to navigate the complexities of it, especially if they're attractive or like there's a guy creeping on them. They just know how to like, you know, like maneuver the politics to, to like fuck somebody over subtly without using violence and using their words. They're just very clocked on with it. What I'm realizing in this podcast age is it's in real time, grown men are starting to like realize that other guys talk, uh, have, maybe don't have the best intentions, like, you know, for them, even if they're their friend, like maybe your best friend might be the one stabbing you in your back. Whereas I feel like most girls have this thing. I will say it's a fail safe, but they have this like little thing in the back of their head where they're suspicious of everybody right best friend whatever everyone's a bit of suspicion they're not taken surprised by anything and i think that goes a really 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 long way hey sorry to tell what do you do when your friends show you that they don't care for the business in the way that you do they are not truly invested no of course of course but that's where like i don't know um big up sorry to tell i don't know if you mean i don't know if you're talking about adam 22 in general in this situation but if you are I kind of get Adam 22's point of view. And again, he's his platform. If he wants to fire everybody and change direction, he can. But the point that everybody seems to have, and he doesn't seem to understand, is that he went about it horribly. And he's not taking any accountability for it. Like him, the way he fired Lush on camera was disgusting. The way he basically, you know, exposed House Phone and what he was getting up to back in the day was mad. Like all of that thing was really, really gross. And I think the thing that he didn't really understand was like his ability, like he has no ability or maybe doesn't care for like people's feelings. Like, I don't know, pull someone to one side. Like even the AD thing is a good example. I, I as a fan of AD could see he wasn't really pulling his weight at the show anymore. Just turning up and kind of, you know, doing the bare minimum. He deserved for everything that he's done and him being your friend, he deserved, I think, a, an arm around the shoulder. Hey, can you come outside? Let, let's have a quick chat. 
and maybe talk about like what's going on like which is kind of in a way like a, a warning like hey by the way like i'm not liking that you're not pulling up and that you're not really showing out too much of the show like you need to step up blah 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 then if he doesn't then of course let him go but the way he let the but the way he put him in position to basically force him to go how it kind of all went about took him behind his back and stuff it was just really really gross that lack of people skills i don't understand which kind of goes back to another point i made another another podcast or another stream where i think to myself like a lot of these guys who are getting rich and successful from doing podcasting who are basically just content creators like essentially if you're a content creator and you get very successful you have a lot of eyes on you and you have a lot of clout on you. Naturally, people want to come and work for you. So then you just turn into a de facto boss of a network when you're not really a, a boss and you don't really have any idea on how to kind of manage people. So that's why I'm not really, I don't really understand why these guys and girls don't just hire somebody to manage the data of the network. You can still be the star that attracts all the talent and attracts the eyes to your platform or whatnot, but get someone to actually manage the day-to-day of like who gets scheduled in, who's doing what, making sure people turn up on time, you know, appraisals, KPIs, whatever. Have somebody actually managing it because clearly these guys and girls are terrible business people when it comes to managing people. When it comes to managing themselves, cool. But when it comes to managing a group of people, rubbish. Their people skills are terrible. Like Joe Bunnam's a good example. Adam's a good example. Like absolutely terrible. But again, you know, maybe this lesson will be a lesson for everybody going forward and what they're doing. And hopefully they'll, they will be able to learn a big lesson from it. But I still don't think this whole thing means, um, yeah, exactly, like a producer. Basically, yeah, that's what I mean, and cheese food. But I don't know, in, in my head, from listening to podcasts, I feel like producers on shows are just producing the show. Like, whether they're doing tech stuff, whether they're providing topics, but I don't feel like they're actually managing the business of the, do you understand what I mean? They're not managing the business of the podcast. They're not, like, making sure people turn up here, um, dealing with in, interpersonal kind of issues and whatnot. It's just more so they're producing the actual show, what you see on camera, but not actually managing the network, whatever that means. Um, I, I really do think a lot more people need to do that, but I'm assuming they don't do it because it's going to cost money, isn't it? And one thing that always costs a lot in the business is definitely salaries. Um, they definitely add up over time. So I can imagine that's why a lot of these um, YouTubers are like, you know what, I'll just do it on my own and kind of, you know, um, hope that it, I kind of get it right.